Hello, this is Joe Yuhan, and today we're talking about knee alignment. Knee alignment is really important, and it's not just about the knees, it's about the whole system. It's not just about knee pain, or even leg pain for that matter, it's about how alignment of the leg impacts the stability, and ultimately the strength of how we push off when we run. And so if we just talk about what neutral is, we want to think about basically connecting three dots. So you have the hip joint here, you've got the knee in between it, and then you've got the ankle or basically the middle of the foot. And so depending on where your leg is in space, we want that to be in a straight line. And what generally tends to happen is because the pelvis is wider than usually our stance and especially our landing when we run, there's this tendency to sag in. This is called knee valgus. Knee varus is a lot less common. And it tends to be this sort of passive, hanging out in this mega bow-legged position. This is a lot less common, especially among younger people, though it can happen. Neutral, then, is sort of this midpoint, where you have a straight but angled line between the middle of the foot and the hip, and that's where the knee wants to rest, or should rest in an efficient state. And so, like I said, valgus is this position. Where does valgus come from? It tends to come from this relaxing or sagging position. Internal rotation of the femur plays a role. Adduction of the femur plays a major role. But you'll also see that there's some relative rotations that happen at the shin and at the foot as well. And so, why is this important to have neutral alignment when we run is twofold. First of all, when we do something like this, it, it should be kind of obvious that this is a stressful position. And so you can see a torquing happening here where the femur bone goes in, the shin bone goes in, and that, uh, as I like to kind of act out with my hands, it's like this is what, the, what these bones, femur and tibia come together like this. We don't want those bones to, if I'm acting on my right femur, I don't want them to do that. This congruency is supposed to be straight up and down. When those bones do that, that's malalignment, and you can get pain either on this overstretched side or on the compression side um, on the outside over here. But the other thing that can happen at the knee is you've got these bones going in. Well, this kneecap is attached to muscle. That kneecap can track laterally, and so now the kneecap is sort of like, I think of it as a railroad car on this sort of railroad track, it's going to jump the tracks because it wants to go in that straight line, but the tracks are essentially being bent. So that's pain for the knee, but what about the rest of the system? Okay, well, if we do that, we get torquing at the ankle. We get sort of a pronation at the foot. You can also get lateral thigh and hip issues because of that bending in. That's fairly well known, but the other things that we see are sort of go beyond that and a little bit more complicated and it has to do with what happens to this leg when we land on it. And so when we land, if that knee is allowed to bend in, it impacts our ability to then efficiently push off. And so looking at this side, this leg has to push off to have this nice athletic drive through and efficient landing. If this doesn't push off in an efficient way because this knee is buckling in, then when we land, or I should, I should say, when we drive through, this left side has to work a heck of a lot harder to come through because this right side isn't propelling in the way that we should. And so you tend to get this compensatory overreaching because of the under push on the right side. And so this becomes a painful problem that we want